Hello everyone. In this video here I'll be doing a demonstration of how to polish and port uh, your vehicle's throttle body. Now in order to do this procedure you will have to remove the throttle body off the vehicle. Now uh, you will have to uh, do a little research in order to determine how your throttle body does come off the vehicle itself. Uh, this throttle body I have here today is from my uh, 1997 BMW 540i. And uh, as you can see I already do have it removed. Um, I basically have it pretty much split down except for the shaft that comes on the inside here. Uh, now you also notice what's missing is the throttle plate in the inside here. Uh, normally I like to take the throttle plate out because it is a little easier to work around in the inside here. Now depending on your vehicle, sometimes you can remove the shaft, other times you can't. Uh, in this particular model here you can, it is, uh, it is a press shaft in the bearings here. Now I have uh, had previous vehicles in the past where you can remove the shaft and it isn't an issue. Now in order to remove the shaft, normally you have to remove all this linkage off the side and uh, that's something else you might have to research just to determine uh, depending on your vehicle because it does vary between manufacturers and styles of throttle bodies. Now in order to remove the throttle plate, there is two screws here. Uh, now normally what I find, they are a uh, brass screw. So they are a softer material than the shaft itself. Uh, they are normally peened over on the opposite side here. Uh, that's so uh, when you're when your engine is running, they, uh, the screws themselves won't actually back out and uh, be sucked into your intake and down to your combustion chamber, so that is a safety precaution that's just put in by the, uh, the manufacturer. Now normally what you do is you spray a little penetrating oil on the back side and you can back them out and uh, they will slowly work themselves out depending if they are an expanded, uh, expanded thread on the back side or uh, if they're peened over. Just the uh, the oil gives it just a bit of a lubricant there and uh, the other thing also is that the screws are normally a softer material than the shaft itself so they shouldn't damage the uh, threads within the shaft when you back them out. Now you also have to watch so you don't strip the heads on them either just to be careful about that. And once you remove the screws you can open the throttle all the way here. I'm not going to do this because I already have something in here which I'll ex explain in a minute. So once you open it all the way and the flappers basically in this position here you just pull it straight out it may come out one way or the other way uh, depending how it's positioned uh, from factory. Now uh, once you remove the flapper out in this case I am leaving the shaft in here uh, just as I mentioned earlier it is, tends to be a little easier to work on the inside here you don't have the, uh, the flapper in the way uh, when you're shaving the inside of the throttle body out and sanding and then polishing it after now the areas you do not want to touch uh, when shaving or sanding or anything like that, you can do a light buff on there, but that is all I would recommend on there, is uh, where the uh, throttle plate does make contact within the bore of the throttle body itself. Now you can see there is, um, it's a little hard to see on the camera here, but there are some witness marks that go around, you can see where the shaft is. Now normally it's um, it just directly closes the whole hole up. And uh, if you do end up touching this area here and end up opening it up more, uh, you will cause uh, problems the way your vehicle runs. So that is uh, that is something you do not touch in there. Now, before the flapper and after the flapper is where you can sand out and uh, and open it up just slightly and give it a nice polish on the inside. Now, in this particular vehicle here, especially with the older model V8s and the BMWs, uh, we do have a mechanically controlled traction control system so basically what it does is almost um, I guess the easiest way to explain almost has dual throttle bodies uh, one uh, butterfly stays open all the time and the other one is closed which is controlled by your um, gas pedal so what this one does here is when the computer senses the vehicle is braking traction it just closes this flapper up instead just to uh, just to kill the throttle uh, so you uh, so just to reduce the wheel spin now this does come as a fairly rough casting from factory. Uh, I'll insert a picture here just to see what it looks like before I polish it. Now I have taken some time here and you can see I have polished the inside of it and uh, what it does look like when it's finished. Now in order for this procedure here you do uh, use uh, various tools um, in order to get this nice finish inside here. Uh, what I basically used, I used a, um, a special stone which uh, goes on the drill and then uh, then I've used a series of flap wheels. Now you can also use, instead of a drill, you can also use a rotary tool such as a Dremel. And uh, this is how you achieve the finish here. Now there is some hand work that is involved with this, which is uh, using the polishing compound and as well as a Scotch-Brite pad. 
Now on this side here, normally what they do is, if you do have a direct intake hose that does uh, bolt up here, which it does on this one here instead of going to the actual throttle body itself, uh, I have opened it up slightly here. Now I didn't want to cut too much on it here, but I want it just so it directs the airflow uh, nicely into the intake here and it doesn't, uh, doesn't quite cut on the restriction here. So you can kind of see what that looks like there. Now as for polishing the throttle plates here, uh, basically we have uh, this is aluminum material here. Uh, ones that have come across in the past have been made of, um, of brass instead. So they are, uh, they are the brass color rather than the color of aluminum. And you can see here I've also polished these as well. So just to show you what it looks like, this is the one still for the throttle body here. Uh, this is the one for the traction control system. So showing you there. And you can see the nice uh, mirror image. Now before we get too carried away with starting to uh, sand out or shave out the inside of the, uh, the throttle body here, now, uh, regardless if we're removing the shaft or we're leaving it in, what you want to do here is you want to, I just use masking tape around the shaft itself. Now, considering these do have bearings in it, I don't want any shavings getting inside there and uh, destroying the bearings within uh, the throttle body itself. Uh, now, if you do have bushings in there, if you do get any filings in there, you also want to make sure that, uh, just to tape off the holes there, uh, because if you do reinstall the shaft, it might cause some installation problems and also uh, premature wear, so you want to be careful with that also. Now you can see inside the bore here, we do have somewhat of a lip um, just before it does hit where the throttle plate sits. So what I'll be doing here is shaving this out with a stone. Now we can use a rotary tool here. This is a Dremel I have uh, with a stone attachment here. And you can see over here I do have various stones that I can use. Uh, this one here is um, designed for the drill itself and this is actually what I used on the um, trash control assembly. Uh, these ones here are designed for the Dremel. Uh, this one here with the thicker shaft is also designed for uh, the drill. Now when using a stone, uh, what you have to do uh, in order so the stone doesn't plug up because we are shaving out aluminum and uh, aluminum what happens is the uh, the shavings do get stuck within the uh, within the stone itself, the porous stone and uh, what happens then is the, uh, the stone doesn't work anymore and basically just drags on the surface and no longer cuts it out. And I can see uh, this has happened to this one here in the past, it's just an old stone I dug up. So what you do is you uh, before starting to cut, you spray the stone down with WD-40, and what this prevents it is uh, from plugging up. And uh, you'll notice when you do spray down the stone, it does soak into the material. And uh, what I do here then is just spray a little bit of uh, WD-40 also on the uh, inside of the bore here. Just uh, just now, when doing any work like this, you also want to make sure you do wear safety glasses uh, just for your own personal safety, so you don't get hurt in the process of doing any work like this. Uh, now when I do start this up here, you want to start inside the throttle body because the oil will fly out of the stone, so, uh, so you don't want oil splattering where you don't want it. Now just to give you an idea what it looks like now, uh, after I've done with the stone here, you can see the majority of the lip has, uh, has gone now. Now don't worry about if there's a couple little spots that are showing or if it's a little rough around the edges because we will go back with a... Uh, with a flap wheel instead and which will clean this up it'll do a lot finer job than compared to the stone itself now when using the stone you will have it uh, uh, somewhat sludge up after a while uh, because the shavings are staying uh, within the oil here so you will have to wipe it out wipe off this stone and re-oil the stone and re-oil the surface again Now again, too, you also want to make sure that you don't take off too much material because uh, some throttle bodies, you can see the uh, outside lip here is, uh, isn't very thick itself. So you want to make sure you don't take off too much material where you're going to uh, create a hole within the throttle body. And uh, when using the stone, too, you don't want to go down too far because we can always go back with the, uh, with the, uh, with the sanding wheel and uh, sand the edges up and if there's something you don't like you can always touch up with the stone and then go back over with the sanding wheel then before we do the final uh, polishing process. I'm moving up in the process here. Now I've switched already to the uh, drum attachment, the little drum sanders. Uh, you can see here these are little replaceable uh, sanding drums uh, for the rotary tool itself here and uh, you can buy these in various types of grits here. So you can see I've been going around here and around the inside uh, to sand, uh, sand the material smoother. Now the grid I am using for this is, uh, is 120. And once you finish up with the little drum sander on the rotary tool itself here, you can see what I left with the finish is slightly shinier than what it was when I finished with the stone here. 
Uh, now if you may notice on the opposite side here you can see the surface is shiny compared to here. Now I've already moved on uh, to the flap wheels on the uh, drill. And the one I'm starting out with here is 120 grit. Now these are available in various uh, various grits here. You can get finer or coarser. Uh, this material is still fairly smooth in here. It's slightly porous, but it isn't it isn't too bad. So I'm starting with 120, so it doesn't do too severe scratches, uh, which I'll have to sand out later, which can be a little more tedious work. Now, as for this piece here, uh, what I used on the inside is after I used the stone, I moved on to a uh, 40 grit, which is very coarse which got a majority of the uh, porous surface out, then I moved up with an 80, and uh, then after that it was a 120, and I can move up to a 240 on here. Now these are available also in different sizes here too. You can see I do have a, a smaller one here, which is, uh, which is a 60 grit, and uh, the larger ones here. So what I'll do again is, you can see on this side here, uh, most of the pores are gone, the surface is fairly smooth. Uh, you remove any of the imperfections here uh, with the coarser grit, uh, which does make it a little easier in the end to move up with a, uh, with a finer grit. And you can just, uh, just focus more on polishing than uh, removing any of the impurities in the surface. Now the exact same process as I used before with the drill is the same with the rotary tool here. You want to move back and forth. Uh, just careful, don't hold it in one spot because you will, uh, will notch out a small area in here. So you want to make sure everything is uh, nice and circular here. You want to move all your way around. So now that I've finished the sanding stage here, basically what I did start out with, as I mentioned earlier, is a 120 grit. And I moved my way up to a 240 here. And after that I used uh, just some uh, standard sandpaper here, wet dry sandpaper you can see here. Uh, you can do this in a dry process or if you want to, uh, it does make it a little easier to uh, does prevent also the sandpaper from plugging up and keeps the dust down to a minimal. You can spray some water on the inside here as well as some water on the uh, the drum sander or on the sandpaper here. Basically just want to do just wet sand the inside of it. And uh, when the sludge does build up after a while you want to make sure you do rinse that out and just rinse the sandpaper off and then continue until you are satisfied uh, with the finish here. So this is, I have finished this with 400 grit sandpaper in the inside so you can see what it looks like there. And again, as I mentioned before, I haven't touched the area here where the butterfly does make contact inside the uh, inside the bore of the throttle body itself. Uh, next, what I'll be moving on to is uh, using Scotch Bright. Uh, this is just before the polishing stage. So now the Scotch Bright I have available here. Here's a used piece I have. Um, you can see what it does look like when it is new. And I also have some green uh, green Scotch Bright here. Now, depending on the color, uh, also does depend on. Uh, uh, how coarse the material is. Now if you have a little more room inside you can get one of these attachments for the drill itself and just put it inside here. Now it does have a fairly good fit but the problem what I have here is I still have the shaft which you can see it's hitting on the opposite side here so I can't really get it in the full way. Uh, so considering it is a somewhat of a dome shape it'll probably stop about halfway and that is it. Uh, so I might resort to doing this by hand. Now uh, just as a sandpaper you can use some water with this so it does uh, do a nice fine finish as well. Now moving along here, I have uh, I started out with the green pad, considering it is coarser than compared to the red. And uh, once I was satisfied with uh, with the surface, if I'll find the sanding marks when it, I moved on to the uh, red pad, which is a very fine composition. So you can see there what it looks like when I'm done. And you can see it has somewhat of a brushed finish on. Uh, the inside of the bore here. Next we'll be moving on to is the polishing stage. Uh, now the product I'll be using for polishing is a uh, polishing paste uh, made by Eagle One and uh, basically what it is is just a little container and you just rub it on the inside. It uh, works exactly the same process as polishing compound and you can mix in a little bit of water with it if you do find it does dry out. Uh, now the stuff I do have I've had it around for a number of years so it has dried out over time so you can spray even a little water in the container uh, just to moisten up the uh, the paste itself just so it's a little more easier to be pliable. Now you can do this by hand or you can have uh, just a simple drill attachment with one of these uh, these cloth wheels or uh, uh, some type of uh, buffing pad which you just go on the inside and just now uh, here's the the uh, polishing paste I'm using here so you can see what it looks like. Now it is a solid based uh, compound it's not uh, not a liquid base like some wax are available and other compounds are. 
basically what you do is do you just put a little bit on the cloth here you have to excuse the cloth this is a little black because what happens after polishing uh, the aluminum it does turn black the cloth and the paste uh, that's just to show you that uh, just so you know what it is working when it starts to turn black it's no big deal and you can keep just rubbing it back and forth and the more you rub it uh, the more it actually does turn black and uh, once it starts getting a little harder to work with you just uh, wipe it away and uh, you can see what the surface does look like underneath. So after you finish up with the uh, metal polishing compound, uh, you should have something that looks like this. And you see how we got pretty much a perfect mirror finish within the inside here. And I did also take the polishing compound over top of where the uh, butterfly does meet the bore surface there. Uh, there you don't have to worry about really taking any, any material down, just smoothens up the surface a little bit and gives it a little higher polish so the air does flow through smoothly. Next piece we'll move on to here is the butterfly uh, for the inside of the throttle body here. You can see this one is aluminum as mentioned before. Uh, some of them can be made of brass also. So you can see how it, uh, it does have somewhat of a rough finish on it. It isn't a fully polished surface. Uh, but also compared to the inside of the throttle body, it uh, still has a smooth finish on it. It doesn't have any really uh, really poor spots in it. So basically, instead of using any sandpaper or anything like that, we're just going to skip right to the, uh, the scotch bright stage. So basically what we want to do is just give it a good rub down, the same as we did uh, inside the throttle body here. And we can use water for this also. You can see there's still a little bit of water um, content inside the pad itself. You can see this tone does start changing on it. And it does, uh, does start becoming more of a mirror finish on it. So basically, once we've gone over the whole flapper with this and we're satisfied, uh, we can move on to the polishing stage uh, exactly like we used in the uh, bowl of the throttle body. Now once you're done polishing the butterfly, I've reinstalled it back in the uh, throttle body itself here. Now uh, just for reinstallation, you just do it in reverse of what you uh, removed it. Uh, for reinstalling the screws, uh, you will have to expand them on the back side. Uh, I have seen some people also using Loctite on them. Uh, I've never done that personally. Normally I just do, a, just do an expansion on them with a center punch or a chisel just to make sure they don't, uh, don't back out and end up in the intake. As for the back side here. Now as I mentioned before also, uh, you can flare the front side of this, depending if you have an intake hose on it. Uh, I haven't done this on this particular one because where the uh, traction control assembly does bolt up to this, it is the same diameter as what the opening bore on the throttle body is, so I just left it as it is. Uh, there's really no improvement I can do for that. And as for the back side, I've also left this as it is too because I do have a plastic intake and the intake is uh, perfect size as accordance to the bore on the throttle body here. Sometimes you can open these up also. Uh, in this particular situation, it didn't bother. And uh, once you've reinstalled the screws here, you can reinstall the throttle body. Uh, normally, I would recommend if you do re remove the throttle bodies, replace the gasket on it too, because you don't want any, uh, want any vacuum leaks on the vehicle. So thank you for watching my tutorial video. If you have any comments or questions, please don't hesitate to post them. Also, please subscribe to my channel for further tutorial videos as well as rate this video. Thank you for watching.